Hello, I'm going to discuss the socio-cultural changes and the economic changes as we go through this. There are three key areas that will impact strategic planning over the next 25 to 30 years. These areas are going to drive transportation needs. Success will favor the competitor who forecasts accurately and positions accurately for the future. We hope to help you do that here today. These three areas that, that are on the slide here, I will have one slide for each of those areas as we go through. Before I leave this chart, let me talk a little bit about the global information grid that's a predominantly thought of in military terms today, but I would submit to you that in the future, as society becomes more wireless and more mobile, the global information grid is going on very much a market approach. You're going to have a globally integrated market. People are going to live in that web-based society where information has changed. Now the final key thing uh, that I want to do before I step forward too much is that mobile society is going to be a different society than the one we're living in today. For values and things, we're going to see the Gen Xers moving into the senior power positions, the 50-year-old CEOs of companies. Um, Gen X, they're, the, they're really the generation that's been the most ignored uh, by society. They were born in the mid-60s to the mid-1980 time frame. Uh, they saw their parents work through careers, get near retirement only to catch a downsizing move that takes them away. As a result, they're not bitter, but they will not have company loyalties. Uh, brand loyalties will not be a thing for the Gen Xers. Their support role or their support function are going to be the millennialists. Now the millennialists are born 1980 to 2000. They went through the Y2K issue. They understood and heard those stories. Uh, some were old enough at that time to understand that. So they're focused on high tech. They're going to want to know these kinds of things. These two teams are going to place more interest and more emphasis on family type issues and as a result they're going to demand more ethical behavior. Uh, another thing that's going to lead these generations to holding high values is the rapid growth of Islam as a religion. Uh, the next religion under that will be Catholicism. Perhaps those two will merge, who's to say? But neither, neither one uh, merging has anything to do with the fact both will drive these generations to hold these ethical values. They'll want these high values to focus on things. And so as their beliefs form that way, we're going to see something that Tom Friedman actually alluded to in his book uh, about a flat world and a flat society. He said that if you're on the pathway to be the man or to be the woman, to be the boss in other words, when you're on that pathway you tend to focus on actions and actions that lead to success. Uh, we need to be, as an industry, focused on the pathway that leads to success. We have to be on that pathway in 30 years. Now one of the other things that's going to uh, create an observation point here for you is that the population of the world in the U.S. is increasing. As it increases, the diversity in the workplace, the embracement of that is exploding. Uh, things are changing a little bit as the workplace becomes more uh, diverse. The elderly generation, that's folks like me, uh, at, at today's age, by the time these things come to fruition in 30 years, I'll be in my mid-70s. I'm already a web shopper. Think what I'll be like in 30 years when I really don't want to spend the time to go to the store. I want to spend that time with a grandchild. Or I want to spend that time doing other, other uh, quality of life type thing. I want to point, click, pay, and move on and do those kinds of things from home. But the one thing that I'm going to notice, along with the younger generation, I'm going to want to know, where's my stuff? Once I get it ordered, I want to know where it is. I want to be able to track it. I want to keep it coming to me. I want to know what's going on. The way I'm going to do that is through the speed of tech refresh. Uh, Millennials are used to technology. They're used to technology changing over very quickly. It will fuel knowledge transfer and growth. They're going to want to keep going, become stronger, uh, have more influence in that. Uh, strategic planning is going to change as a result of that. They're going to demand that accountability. Uh, they're going to demand that we collaborate or die. Let me wrap up the socio-cultural aim very quickly here on uh, chart number 10. Clear ethical behavior is going to be the name of the game. It's what we have to focus on. It's what we have to give. 
Strategic planning has to pick up and become faster. The cycle time is going to change. Uh, you can't wait for, for a decade to do strategic planning. The days of the five-year plan is gone. The pressure to perform will be on. Now, the same forces are driving economic change. They're driving us down this growth path. The global economy is continuing to grow. In fact, it's accelerating. Trade partners and alliances have to be formed very quickly. They have to be formed today for the next 30 years. Tech awareness is going to pay a dividend for us in that field. The bottom line is that the forward thinker is going to have a very bright future. The forward thinker is going to be the successful on the business stage in the next 25 years or so. These are some trading partners that are very quickly coming to the forefront of global trade. I put this up here very quickly just to let you know that these are the folks that we need to be considering partnering with because if we fail to partner with them, we will be run out of the market by them and their other partners in 25 years. The other important thing, and then I'll move on uh, in the presentation, we have to go green. Uh, the, millennial, the millennials and the Gen Xers are going to demand us going green. It'll be a requirement. Green is expensive, so we need to plan now for cost effectiveness in that. One way is to add in things like automation. Uh, and we'll see some other things later in the briefing that help us to go green as well. But the bottom line that we have to remember is as we change, as we plan for the future, we need to answer this question of where's my stuff people will want to know. Now, I've alluded to a couple of these, the alliances and the partnerships. Let me close out with them and talk about uh, doing strategic planning, doing partnerships, forming alliances today. They're very critical. We have to have clear communication. We have to understand our partners. We have to understand our responsibilities and roles. We have to secure agreements in a multi-partner environment today because there will not be time in the future. The last thing is as the markets expand, they're going to expand very quickly. We have to be prepared. These will come upon us like a thief in the night. You'll not be ready. You'll wake up and, and the market will have expanded and you'll be left behind. And so there is opportunity ahead, but we have to act now. We have to act now for cost effectiveness. We have to act now to embrace technology. We have to act now so that our suppliers and our consumers will want to do business with us. And in order to do that, we're going to have to be able to answer the question of where's my stuff when they call and ask. Now I'll turn over the presentation to my colleague Dan Zink who will cover the next three items that you see here on this slide.